All right, welcome back to the Book of Romans. Again, I'm your teacher, Dr. Benjamin Olson. I just want to clear something up here. We're going to call this like an excursus on the theme of the Book of Romans from chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And the reason I needed to do this uh, real quickly, because I, I went back over the video and realized that I skipped a very, very important uh, part of the theme. I, I, when we were talking about the, the power of God unto salvation uh, to everyone who believes, we looked at the word power of God, dunamis. We looked at the word believe, pistis or pistuo. Uh, but we skipped over probably the most important word in the entire gospel, and that's the word salvation. Uh, le, uh, so I really needed to clear this up. So I, I'm doing a completely uh, different video uh, to, to do that. The word salvation here is the Greek word soteria. Right, Soter or soteria, maybe a better uh, pronunciation, soteria. The word soteria, or the verbal form sozo, uh, is I save or, uh, or salvation. The word itself uh, is not, uh, we use it many times technically to talk about the, the, the eternal salvation or the, the idea of I get to go to heaven when I die. That's not the actual definition of the word. The definition of the word is simply to deliver or to rescue. And we, we, we need to make sure that we're very clear on that because not every time that the word salvation or saved is used in the New Testament does it mean eternal salvation or I get to go to heaven when I die. And here, I think it's actually very important that Paul uses the word salvation because he won't use it again until we get to chapter 10. Instead, Paul uses different words in chapters 3, 4, and 5, and another word in chapter 6 and 7, and then another word in chapter 8 that all are talking about our eternal salvation. Instead, what Paul is talking about here, this salvation, he's using this in, I believe, a general sense, the, the, the generic use of the term salvation or deliverance or to be rescued uh, because as we as we as it plays out in the rest of the book, we see it used in four different ways. As I mentioned before, in chapters three, four, and five, we see Paul use the the very specific term justified, justified. And when we get to those passages, we'll we'll, we'll outline that word a little more. The term means to declare to be righteous. Okay, to declare to be righteous. Uh, the reason why justification is an aspect of salvation is because this is God's rescue plan, his, his deliverance for mankind. He's delivering mankind. What is he delivering them from? Well, look back at the, uh, we, we see it going forward into the, into, uh, the book of Romans in chapter 1, for the wrath of God is, to, is, is manifest uh, or revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, right? It's the, it's the, the salvation here, the deliverance is specifically from the wrath of God. Notice this wrath of God is the presently revealed wrath of God. Again, we'll get into that in chapter, uh, in the next video, when you get into chapter 1, verse 18. But in chapter 1, verse 17, this theme state, or six, verse 16, this theme statement I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation. He means it in a generic sense. First point, justification. Uh, this is a point in time, justification, uh, which is declaring the unrighteous person to be righteous because of faith. Right. The second aspect we see in chapter 6 and 7, which is sanctification. Right. Sanctification uses that term to be sanctified, to be set apart, to be made more holy. That is a present tense idea of salvation. By the way, this bears out throughout the New Testament. Uh, when you see the word saved, many times you'll see the word in a past tense, saved, uh, like in, in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, right? Uh, it's saved, past tense, right? That's justification. When you see it in the present tense, or being saved, that's the idea of sanctification, the idea of being more made more holy in your life. That's a present tense idea that God is delivering us from, again, the wrath of God, the presently revealed wrath of God. Finally, the actual full deliverance from this wrath of God is 
in glorification. We see that at the end of chapter 8, Paul goes into glorification. This idea of glorification is when we receive our glorified bodies, that's the, we get to go to heaven to be with, with, with Jesus. Of course, even that, we go to an eternal state and then eventually into uh, the, the, the kingdom in our resurrected bodies and eventually the eternal state in our re resurrected bodies in the new Jerusalem. That's the resurrection, the glorified body, uh, which we'll get to when we get to chapter 8, right? But even in chapters 9, 10, and 11, when Paul is talking about salvation for Israel, he's again talking about how the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is important to the Jews so that they might be saved or delivered from, again, the present wrath of God, which is against Israel for their rejection of Jesus as their Messiah, right? That's exactly the same word. So when we look at this, it's important to understand the, the, the more generic understanding of the term salvation here, because when we get into these various passages, and Paul uses the term differently, uh, or uses different terms to describe the same thing, that each one of those has a nuance of, of meaning that we have to understand. If we don't, we're just going to use the term salvation in this generic, I get to go to heaven when I die, and we're going to miss the whole point of the book. All right, so again, I, I, I failed to completely hit this point. Uh, maybe that video would have been 20 minutes long, I don't know. But I wanted to come back, hit this point, kind of a short video here to hit soteria, uh, soteria or sozo, the noun and verb of the word salvation. Again, just to sum up, the word means uh, in, the, in the past tense, justified, uh, declared to be righteous, to be delivered from the wrath of God uh, in that sense. Then sanctification being presently delivered from the wrath of God in being made more righteous or more holy, set apart, sanctified. And then finally, to be fully rescued from the wrath of God in glorification in my resurrected body, that I am fully uh, 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 rescued from this wrath of God in this life, uh, in the age to come. But also, Romans 9, 10, and 11, Israel itself, the people of God, the nation of Israel, is needing deliverance from this, uh, uh, from the wrath of God as well, which will take place in the end times, uh, in the coming of Christ, for uh, uh, to to rule uh, and reign on this earth for a thousand years over the nation of Israel, which we'll get to in Romans 9, 10, 11. All right, thanks for this uh, uh, real quick uh, uh, excursus there on uh, on salvation, uh, but vitally important. Uh, I hope that you make sure that you watch this video along with Romans 1, uh, 16, 17.